If you're a long-time viewer of this channel, you know there are a few things we love more than overanalyzing vehicles that shown up for maybe 20 seconds in the background of the Star Wars films. Well, in this video, we're back on our bullshit, for we're going to be taking a look at the speeders used by the Royal Naboo security forces. Two of these bad boys made brief appearances in The Phantom Menace, the Jian Speeder and the more well-known Flash Speeder. These weren't the only speeders used by the RNSF, however, and today we'll be covering the entire Naboo arsenal. Attention, Sergeant on deck! For most of their history, the Naboo were pacifists, with no standing army and only a small space force consisting solely of star fighters. But they weren't entirely lacking in ground forces. They did have a well-trained volunteer militia for security purposes. This militia was the Royal Naboo Security Forces, which was composed of a bunch of different subunits. We've already mentioned the Naboo Royal Space Fighter Corps, which included the Queen's Honor Guard, and there was also the Naboo Royal Navy. Not a space-born navy, mind you, but a mostly ceremonial aquatic navy. The ground-based security forces were divided into three units. These were the security guards, who functioned as police and basic infantry, the security officers, of whom were only about a thousand, who functioned both as veteran soldiers and commanders, and the palace guards, who were few in number but had the best training. These guardsmen were well-trained and loyal, but their effectiveness was somewhat undermined by the less than stellar quality of their equipment. Their uniforms only offered moderate protection in combat, and they didn't really have any weapons stronger than a heavy blaster pistol. This meant that in battle, they weren't all that much better than the Trade Federation's standard B-1 battle droids. While the soldiers of the Royal Naboo security forces were endlessly loyal and would always do their best to defend Naboo, they paled in comparison to a proper army. Their only saving grace was their vehicle arsenal. Most of the RNSF's arsenal consisted of speeders with laser cannons slapped on, but they were surprisingly effective. This was best exemplified by the two best known Naboo speeders, the Flash and the Gian speeders. Both of these speeders were based on civilian land speeders put out by the Sora Sub Corporation, a Solustan subsidiary of the Commerce Guild. They were repulsor lift craft and were designed for speed and maneuverability, and the additional RNSF modifications made them surprisingly heavy hitters. They could take a fair bit of punishment too, as both craft had much more armor than you would expect for a land speeder. This actually wasn't a modification on the Naboo's part. Sora Sub had designed the speeders for use on urban worlds with congested sky lanes, and the added armor was meant for protection in speeder crashes. We're not sure land speeders with military grade armor are a better solution to traffic accidents than better urban planning, but the Republic's gonna Republic, I guess. Let's take a look at the Flash Speeder first. Officially the Seraph class urban land speeder, the Flash Speeder was four and a half meters long, had room for one pilot and three passengers, and was fast as all hell. Typically painted green, the Flash Speeder was sleek and aerodynamic and its open seating area sat one passenger next to the pilot and two more behind. It was propelled by a pair of side-mounted engines, each of which boasted triple-drive turbines and kept aloft by a set of repulsor lifts. The flash speeder could float up to two meters off the ground and it could fly at speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour. Speed was the flash speeder's big selling point. The RNSF used it as a rapid attack craft and scout transport as it could quickly flee if the odds turned against it. The flash speeder was also quite maneuverable, which made up for its somewhat exposed engines and open seating area. This also allowed the flash speeder to operate effectively in cramped urban streets, which is what it was designed for. But the flash speeder was also armed. It had a blaster cannon mounted at the rear with a full 360 degrees of range and rapid fire capabilities. This cannon was small, but powerful capable of mowing down enemy infantry with ease. It was also effective against light vehicles, such as Staps and other speeders, though it had a harder time piercing the armor of tanks. Then there was the Gian speeder, officially known as the V-19 land speeder. Typically painted purple, the Gian speeder was 5.7 meters long 
and was quite similar to the Flash Speeder in terms of design. It was manned by one pilot and one gunner, with room for two passengers behind them, and it had an additional cargo capacity of 50 kilograms. The Gian Speeder was very well armored, even more so than the Flash Speeder, and its engines were tucked behind the main body of the craft to reduce its target profile. This reduced the Gian Speeder's maneuverability considerably, making it less effective in urban warfare, but the Speeder somewhat made up for this with its faster maximum speed of up to 240 kilometers per hour. The Gian Speeder's biggest selling point was its weaponry, however. It boasted two light-repeating laser cannons and a turreted medium laser cannon, with the lighter guns mounted on the sides of the speeder and the medium gun mounted on the hood. These were much more powerful than the puny blaster cannon of the flash speeder. The light cannons could tear through enemy positions with ease, while the main cannon could pierce the armor of an armored assault tank, as shown in the Phantom Menace. This allowed the Gian speeder to punch far above its weight, making it one of the most effective speeders in the Naboo's arsenal. The Naboo didn't have all that many of them, with that said. The RNSF only had 36 Gian speeders in total. Now it's time to talk about the rest of the Naboo's speeders and Repulsa craft. Starting off, we had the Naboo Commando Transport, which was certainly an interesting vehicle. This was essentially a flat, unarmed Repulsa lift slab with seating for a few passengers inside. We can't understand why this thing existed when the Naboo had Flash and Gian speeders that were perfectly capable of transporting troops into battle. This was just the worst version of those craft, and it looked goofy as hell to boot. Speaking of goofy, we have the S-130 Shelter Speeder. This one was actually from Star Wars The Clone Wars, and yet somehow its design is an even worse abomination than any of the others we're about to cover. This speeder made its only appearances in a handful of Clone Wars episodes, and it... Wow, I mean, where do we even begin? The S-130 was a medical transport with a full spectrum of sensors and medical equipment, plus hazmat suits and quarantine chambers. All of that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is its design. The cockpit was mounted at the top of an absurdly long neck. It had an even longer loading ramp that seems much too steep to effectively cart stretches up, and it had these odd bubble canopies in its wings that seemed to serve no purpose. The real kicker is that this thing was faster than both the Flash and Gian speeders, with a top speed of 280 kilometers per hour, and it could also be equipped with a pair of laser cannons. Not that those would ever be necessary. If we were part of an army invading Naboo, we'd shoot ourselves if we ever saw this design crime coming across the battlefield. Moving on, we have the Udapal speeder, which seems to just be a 74Z speeder bike with a different coat of paint. We have no information about this thing apart from the fact that it had a laser cannon, so we'll now move on to the last few Naboo speeders. First, we have the Champion, which came in two variants, the Champion and the Heavy Champion. This was essentially some sort of hybrid abomination between the Flash Speeder and a proper tank. The Champion and its heavier variant were heavily armored and required one pilot with room for one passenger. The seating area was completely enclosed on this craft, and the Champion also boasted a total of three turreted blaster cannons. The Heavy Champion was basically the same thing, just with heavier guns and armor. Lastly, we have the Steadfast, which pretty much was just a land speeder converted into a tank. This bad boy also required just one pilot, but it could carry a total of 10 soldiers into battle, and it was even larger and more heavily armored than the Champion. The Steadfast had a total of five blaster cannons, some of them quite powerful, which were affixed all over the vehicle, including one in the rear. The Steadfast was essentially equivalent to the Trade Federation MTT, though it was still technically just a land speeder. So, that's our look at the speeders of the Royal Naboo Security Forces. But what do you think? Are there other speeder models you'd like us to take a look at? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comment section below.